Ayan po, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, welcome po sa online service ng Church on the Hill Christian Community. So as we start praising our God, uh, may you join me and the worship team as we open this day with a prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Panginoon, for giving us again another week. Another week filled with blessings, filled with your uh, uh, providence, Panginoon. Thank you for giving us the strength that we need the wisdom we need for the whole week, Heavenly Father. Lord, as we sing these songs of praises, Panginoon, we acknowledge you, Panginoon, for your goodness, Heavenly Father. Lord, thank you for being our light in times of our darkest times, Panginoon. Thank you for being our strength, Panginoon, in times of our weaknesses, Heavenly Father. Lord, these songs is for you and only for you, Heavenly Lord, you are the reason, Panginoon, kung ba't kami umaawit ngayong umagang ito. Maraming maraming salamat po, Panginoon, naway tanggapin niyo po ang awit na papuring iaalay namin sa inyo. Just let me pray. Amen. Kamay 
sa dakilat na ming Dios, walang papantay sa yong pagmamahal. Oh, itin na taas mga kamay sa dakila nating Diyos walang papantay sa iyong pagmamahal ikaw ang kailangan pag-ibig mo Katulad Pagmamahal Mong kay lalim Walang katulad Ang pag-ibig mo Pag-ibig mo Naririto Walang katulad Pagmamahal, pagmamahal Mong kay lalim Walang katulad Itinataas Mga kamay Sa dakila na Diyos Walang papantay Sa iyong pagmamahal Oh, itinataas Mga kamay Sa dakila naming Diyos Walang papantay sa iyong pagmamahal Ikaw ang kailangan Pag-ibig mo, naririg mo Walang katulad sa lahat ng kabutihang ginawa niya sa aming mga buhay. Truly, Heavenly Father, that you are worthy of our songs today, today, Panginoon. You are worthy of our praises, Heavenly Father. Maraming maraming salamat. Ibigat kapangyarihan, 
again and welcome to another Sunday worship service with CHCC. Uh, ako po si Elizel Puguon with CHCC. So this week I am again given the opportunity to speak to you even further about healing. Um, so last week after the worship service, Pastor Arnel actually called me up and asked if I could give another uh, message for this week. Mm, I suppose naramdaman po niya that there was uh, something else that I wanted to elaborate on and um To be honest with you, po, uh, while I was recording last Sunday's um, worship service uh, message, I was, uh, in fact, editing out some of the <laughs> some of the some of the slides from that uh, from that message because I had noticed that I had been sk- speaking for so long that I already passed the one hour mark or the time limit that was. Uh, usually given to speakers without reaching yung point that I wanted to truly emphasize on. Um, so there was a part of the sermon that I had to remove uh, for because of time constraints. And I'm really grateful once again for Pastor Arnel for giving me this opportunity so that I could uh, expound a little more on uh, a topic that I, I believe uh, we need to hear also um but before that of course let us put ourselves in the presence of god 
Let us welcome him into our homes. Let us welcome him into our rooms if we are doing this in our own rooms right now. And uh, let us make him be the center of this morning's message. So, magdasal po tayo. Hallelujah, Father God. We praise and thank you, Lord God, that you have opened up this morning once again, Father, for your message. Panginoon, wherever we may be, may we be in our homes, in our workplaces, Lord God, we welcome you here. We welcome your presence where we are right now, Father. And whether we are receiving this message from you father god in the morning in the afternoon or at night lord god we welcome you we welcome your presence in our lives this day panginoon maraming maraming salamat po that you have made a way for us to be together although we cannot physically be face to face together lord god you have given us these different virtual platforms lord god so that we may still feel the fire and the yearning for the learning of your words, Lord God. Maraming maraming salamat po, Panginoon, na hindi niyo po kami tinatanggalan ng moment where we can share your gospel, your word, Lord God, with our brothers and sisters. Lord, thank you for the hands, Lord God, and the minds, Father God, that you have allowed to conceive these platforms, Lord we thank you, Lord God, for our morning devotions, Lord God, our evening devotions, Lord God. We pray and we thank you for this uh, people, Lord God, who have contributed so much, Father God, for our being together with you. Panginoon, hinihingi lang po namin, Lord, that you continue to bless these people who worked so hard, Father, to bring your words to each and every member of our church, Lord God. And may we pray, Father, that they uh, will not become weary in sharing your word, pa rin po, Panginoon. And this morning, pa, rin po, Lord God, we pray that you open up our hearts and our minds, Lord, to receive your message this Sunday morning. Panginoon, alam po namin, Lord, that you and only you can bring us the message that we need to receive. So, Lord, I pray. Pray, Father God, that you use my entire being, Lord, my thoughts, Lord, my words, and my actions, Father God, to reflect the message that you need our brothers and sisters to receive. Panginoon, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Father God, even right now that the message has not yet been uttered, Lord, because we are uh, assured, Lord God, that your love and uh, your kindness, Lord God, and your security has already wrapped us within your uh, embrace, Father God, and your power, Lord God. And we just pray, Father God, that everything we do from this point on, as we hear uh, your words this morning, Lord, will be reflective, Lord God, of your majesty, your knowledge, Lord God, your wisdom, Father God, and your love. We just pray, Father God, as, as we who are called by your name, Lord, will reflect your true purpose for coming to earth. All of this, Lord God, we lift up to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So, uh, just a short recap well, from our last from last week's message. Uh, we talked about healing. Mm, in uh, since I'm a medical doctor, po, I uh, wanted to share to you a, the views on healing. Um, as some of this were based on the book of uh, Ron Dunn, uh, entitled "Will God Heal Me?" So we spoke of the sources of sickness. We also spoke on um, the different kinds of healing, assisted healing. Uh, natural healing, um, faith healing, and of course, divine healing. Uh, we spoke at length on divine healing and uh, what it looks like, okay, uh, as provided by Jesus. So we saw that it was meant to cure incurable diseases, 
um, Jesus healed the most incurable diseases of, of that time. Uh, he healed with a word or with touch and he healed everyone and anyone who came from for healing whether they had faith or even without it and uh, he healed with completeness and it was immediate the effect of his healing was complete and immediate and uh, and we talked about uh, why divine healing was not being used today why isn't Jesus using divine healing to just wipe out coronavirus away and um, we did say that it is because the coronavirus is not the incurable disease that needs divine healing in our time and as it was reflected by our um, our verse in Matthew 4 23 to 24 his main purpose God's main purpose on earth at that time was to teach and to proclaim the coming of God's kingdom and it was and his healing ministry his physical healing ministry was actually only secondary to his main purpose and that the incurable disease that is present in our time is actually our separation from God because of sin okay so um, one kind of healing that I had to remove from uh, last week's uh, sermon as message was is actually a contrasting type of healing um, I touched on it a little while discussing yung, um, yung divine healing by Jesus Christ and uh, originally I meant to discuss this kind of healing in contrast to divine healing um, but I am now grateful that I can truly discuss it with you at length uh, with all the uh, details that we can place in okay so this kind of healing like I said as contrasted to divine healing is called atonement healing and I believe that this is the kind of healing that is a slippery slope okay uh, the idea here is that both physical healing and forgiveness of sin was obtained by Christ's crucifixion so with the death of Christ on the cross atonement healing believes that Jesus Christ bore both our sin and our sickness when he died on the cross um, this is based on the uh, ideas that sickness resulted from the fall okay so, so when we sinned when um, uh, we, with our original f uh, sin with the fall of man sickness resulted from the fall okay thus they are concluding that all sickness is due to sin all right and Christ's death on the cross made an atonement for its sin and its consequences which then leads all believers to claim okay or it then leads to the belief that every believer has the right to claim healing from all and any physical ailment in other words uh, the idea is that Christ's death saves us from sickness as well as from sin and the healing the physical healing of the body is just as much a part of the gospel as the forgiveness of sin so this is the basis or the foundation of atonement healing okay unfortunately 
there are uh, the, the proponents of atonement healing say that there is a uh, there are two um, verses in the Bible that uh, contribute to this or, or to that, that that prove the the statement or the belief in atonement healing. Um, the first one uh, that they believe in is in uh, Matthew eight sixteen to seventeen. Uh, it reads, "When evening came, they brought him many who were demon possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all those who were ill." This was to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet. He himself took our infirmities and carried away our disease. Okay, this is the belief that um, Jesus, when he came, took our infirmities and carried away our diseases. So, so this is their basis for atonement healing. Uh, however, if we look into when this statement was made, if you put, put it in the chronological um, state of when this was made, this was, these words came before the crucifixion. Okay, and Matthew here is saying that the prophecy of Isaiah was being fulfilled before the crucifixion. Right? So, um, Jesus was healing these diseases before he died on the cross. Right? So, because after he died on the cross, there were still people getting sick. What are we going to say about that? Right? Okay. Uh, the second... New Testament um, verse that uh, they would like to use to prove at atonement healing is in 1 Peter 2 verse 24 which says and he himself bore our sins on his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness for by his wounds we are healed okay they believe that this verse actually proves that by god's wounds we are healed all right so this is the basis of atonement healing in some believers right but if we truly look into the message of the bible on atonement we can see here that in the old testament uh, let's go to the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, a bull of there's an account of a bull offering presented by Aaron, the high priest, which is an offering for the sin of the people and not the sickness. You can find this in Leviticus 16. I mean, there are several verses there describing a bull offering for the atonement of sin, not sickness. Okay, and uh, if we're talking about the New Testament, uh, I will go through the um, the verses that we discussed earlier today. I mean, just a while ago. But if you look at the New Testament, we see here a uh, verses in Hebrews nine, verses eleven to twelve itself. But when Christ came as high priest of the good things that are now already here. He went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made with human hands, that is, is not made of this creation. He did not enter by the means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once and for all by his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. So very clearly, obtaining eternal redemption does not refer to sickness instead it refers to sin so jesus christ as our high priest bore by his own blood our sin not the sickness okay 
let's go back to first peter verses 2 24 which is actually being used by uh, atonement healing believers as a proof of atonement believe uh, healing right so he says he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds you have been healed so they emphasize on the Isaiahic prophecy that by his wounds you have been healed but they seem to forget the first part of this verse wherein he they themselves say he himself bore our sins on his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness okay the healing that they are showing here the healing that the second part refers to here is actually the healing from sin okay isn't it a little difficult to, we are talking about the bearing of sin so that we may die to sin and righteousness and then suddenly we speak of physical healing by his wounds we are healed even through even with this verse already we can contradict uh, the idea of of atonement healing because by this verse we are saying that the healing that is healed by his wounds is not the physical healing but the healing of our sins which brings death so these are the uh, biblical arguments against atonement healing <laughs> the the mismo verse that they use to try to prove atonement healing is the verse that we can use to contradict it and um, the reason that I am uh, a bit against uh, not just a bit I'm really against atonement healing is it has very dangerous side effects um, I cannot agree more with the side effects that I was presented by the book with will God heal me when it comes to atonement healing because truly it is saddening that sometimes there are some churches that do believe in atonement healing and um, it's sad to say that I have uh, met some who have some inclinations in towards atonement healing and uh, I am not going to <laughs> elaborate nanang, but it, it's sad to hear that uh, it is a sometimes a casual casual remark that really sticks to me and then um, I start to believe uh, or I start to think that uh, perhaps there is something there that we do not understand completely and I hope that uh, with this message we can see uh, the danger of believing so much in atonement healing. So the first real side effect of atonement healing is act to actually danger to health, which is uh, if you remove that anger, anger to H equals death. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you can see it in the visual aid. Danger to health. If we remove anger to H, is actually means death. Um, this is atonement healing. Is a teaching that is a bit dangerous. Okay, if you are, if you belong to a church that purely believes in atonement healing, there is a great danger because this uh, churches would have you discourage medical treatment which means that um, members of this church would never go to a doctor would never go to a hospital because they believe that with their prayers and with their um, faith with their belief that they will be healed that they have the right to be healed from this disease 
they no longer go to any medical professional of any kind okay this is the danger here because sometimes if you so purely believe in atonement healing you would refuse medical treatment or medical advice because you believe that you have the right to be healed but that because Jesus Christ died on the cross and took away the sin of the world he also took away the he sickness which is a result of sin so you place yourself in danger because of that belief so that is the most dangerous side of it I think of atonement healing that you now refuse all science all forms of medications because you believe that God is going to heal you and that is God will heal you if he allows you to be healed God will heal you God will heal you because healing comes from God but God gave us so many different kinds of healing and we talked about that last week so let's not just depend on atonement healing or the healing that is brought about by our praying fervently to God. I, I don't mind that. But perhaps we should also look into the other kinds of healing that God gave us on earth. Also, another side effect of atonement healing is that it adds to the grief of those people who are sick um, for example think of this you have a family member who dies and you hear the words that it was probably because that family member of yours did not believe enough that he was not healed from his disease because one of your other family members did not believe and that that person whom you love who died of a sickness was a result of a punishment of your disbelief or somebody else's disbelief how painful would that be for you you're already grieving for the loss of a loved one and somebody will tell you it's because that person did not believe oh it's because you did not believe enough you did not pray enough you did not do enough you did not offer up sacrifices enough or earlier you did not pray earlier for the healing of the disease or even worse um, is that it's because you brought the, that family member to a doctor and they placed all these kinds of chemicals in your, 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 your family member's body you should have just prayed how painful would it be to both lose that family member and to f suddenly find out it's because I didn't do enough it's a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous side effect. You're adding to the grief of, of someone who is already sick or someone who lost someone because of sickness. It also, atonement healing also raises false hope. Okay, so uh, this one. Uh, uh, this one refers mostly to uh, you know our um, well in America it's more common about the TV evangelic evangelists where they have healing crusades and you have you now have uh, flocks of people uh, or, or or they the healing crusaders go to churches to have these healing ministries and 
of course not everyone will be healed or they, uh, some will be uh, given this um, hope that you will be healed because this TV evangelist or this healing evangelist has already touched you and has uh, started the process of the healing by the Holy Spirit right and then you now feel hopeful and then you start to not go through your actual um, medications or, or procedures because you have that hope that you have been touched by this healer thus you are not going to need the procedure anymore again that is related to our first side effect danger to health equaling death it can equal death if you leave it all up to that hope that you have been touched by this healer therefore you will be healed even without the aids of medication even without the aid of any surgery you will be healed because you have been touched by this healer so this again is a dangerous side effect another dangerous side effect is that this atonement healing promotes self-condemnation uh, this means po, that um, it is upon yourself to be healed atonement healing means that it is upon yourself to be healed it is your face in belief in God and in your prayers that you will be healed therefore if you are not healed from this disease it means that you are doing something wrong so adding this to your guilt you have sinned you have committed a sin that is so bad that Jesus no longer wants to heal you or you have done a sin so bad and your faith is so small that's why you're not being healed Okay. that becomes your thought because if you believe in atonement healing you believe that it is because of your faith it is because uh, of your of how hard you prayed that you are healed so that means that if you are not healed it is upon you the fault that you are not being healed is because of you you are the reason you are the very reason that you are not healed again this is so dangerous so not only are you sick now but you're sick because of yourself so okay, can you imagine the kind of guilt and the mental health of this sick person is feeling if this person believes in atonement healing that means that he believes that I am not being healed from what I am feeling right now because I myself am so guilty and then it's upon me it's upon my prayers it's upon my 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 faith to be healed but because I'm not doing enough I am not going to be healed it is so dangerous another side effect is that it prevents atonement healing prevents God from ministering to us through our sickness if we believe that by Jesus' death on the cross all of sin and sickness have been taken away and that we believe that um, sickness is because of our sin and sickness that we are receiving right now is because we have done something so bad so wrong and we are not doing enough to atone for it or that it uh, uh, this sickness is here with us 
and it's not being killed because you are not believing, we totally misunderstand the God that we are worshipping. And we cannot see Him for who He is and what He is trying to show us through sickness and disease and through suffering. If we have this belief that this is the reason I am sick, you cannot know the God who allowed the sickness to come upon you. He's trying to teach you a, a, a lesson, a, a valuable lesson, or He wants you to know Him. But instead of that kind of ministry, what you are receiving is that I am being punished, I am not doing enough, This prevents you from seeing God as He truly is, as seeing the purpose that He has for sickness and suffering. It is painful. There are times when He uses sickness and suffering and, and death because He wants to draw us closer to Him. But we do not see that if we believe in atonement healing. If we are hardcore believing in atonement healing, we do not see this part of suffering. We do not see this perspective of God's ministry of allowing suffering to happen in, to happen in our lives. And uh, lastly, perhaps one of uh, the more dangerous side effect of atonement healing is that destroys compassion for those who need it. If you are a believer in atonement healing and you see this upon your, uh, on yourself, it means that you see it also in others. So that if you see someone who got sick of the coronavirus, it's the first thing that you are thinking, ah, May kasalanan kasi yan. It destroys your compassion for those who need it most. It makes you believe that since the sickness is a result of sin and that this person is sick, still sick despite the fact that he is a believer, it means that there is something wrong with his face. This person is sick because meron siyang hindi ginagawang tama. Hindi siya nag-pray enough, hindi siya, nag, uh, hindi siya nagsasak, hindi siya nag-offering or nag-tight enough, kaya siya nagkakasakit. It destroys how you see other people if you believe in atonement healing. If you purely believe that atonement healing on in atom desire I'm talking about hardcore believers if you purely uh, devote yourself to a government healing you will believe that everyone who gets sick is because of their lack of faith lack of belief lack of service lack of actions and you do not see you, you know you you sometimes feel that there is no need to be compassionate about these people because they probably deserved it. And that is very, very dangerous. Because what then? What then can we offer our sick brothers and sisters if not compassion? If this is in the back of your mind, you are sick because of that. But then, even I, you know, um, I see patients whose uh, diseases are clearly uh, due to the effect of their lifestyles. Um, it's hard, but there comes a time when uh, one or two thoughts would come in. Ah, it's because he didn't listen to what he was told. 
despite the medical advice he did this that's why that's happening he didn't follow instructions clearly that's why that's happening and you stand you start to put yourself on a pedestal now if i were in that situation i would have done this and that i would have listened more i would have clearly followed instructions better those things come into your head and it destroys your compassion for that person and whenever and you know that uh, in, in my profession I do see um, a direct cause and effect of a lifestyle and sickness and sometimes it does come into my mind that you did actually do something wrong that's why you're sick right now but what I always try to do is to try to remain compassionate. What our sick brothers and sisters, our sick brothers and sisters, those who are suffering from illness right now, what they need more is our compassion. Those who are physically ill, what they need more is our compassion. And if you have a belief in atonement healing, that their disease is because of sin, then that compassion you have for this person who is sick is lessened. And any help that you may think of extending to them, you might withdraw because of this belief. And that is so dangerous. So the belief of atonement healing not only affects you uh, in your guilt if you get sick, but also in how you relate to other brothers and sisters who, who believe also in Christ. So this is a very dangerous teaching to have. And, and I hope that in our church, we don't really believe in atonement healing. I, I, I really hope that um, this is not a foundation of some of our beliefs because there are so many dangerous side effects. So in conclusion, of all the heal kinds of healing that I've spoken to in the past two weeks, Atonement healing is the one form of healing that I cannot in any shape or form advocate. I just can't. <laughs> well, first of all, atonement healing tries to present that Christ died for the forgiveness of sin and for the healing of physical disease. And the verses that I've presented by themselves belie this belief in first uh, peter um, we discuss on he, by his wounds you are healed but by that very verse you can see here that the healing that they were referring to was not physical healing but the healing from sin so Christ died for our sin and not our sickness. Sickness is not a sin. So it does not need atonement. Atonement does not work for sickness because it is not sin. And if we are trying to look into the consequences of sin, uh, being, uh, shall we say, atoned by his crucifixion why don't we also look at the other consequences of, of sin to name a few um, toiling or laboring to make a living is also a consequence of the fall and so is the pain of childbirth being a consequence of sin that came from the fall so if these two things, just, just to mention two, we, we also have the snakes slithering into the ground, right? If that's, those things are still happening, if we still have 
to labor and toil to make a living and if women still feel pain during childbirth isn't it only logical to know that sickness as a result of sin is still going to be present because these two other consequences of sin are still present so atonement healing to me has no basis we can't advocate it we can't say that it is uh, some I, I can't personally I can't advocate it because I can't believe that that is what the healing that Jesus Christ brought to earth or that God gave us as a gift is like because that destroys all our understanding of healing sickness and atonement it just does not make sense to me to think that atonement healing is a form of healing that would be advocated by the Bible that it would be advocated by someone who believes in a father do you do we really think that the God that we know would truly do this to us the God that loves us so much that he gave us Jesus Christ would do this if physical healing was so much part of atonement, why is it so difficult to receive? If according to atonement healing, right? So, um, if we look at forgiveness, forgiveness of sin, which is what Jesus Christ died for, for it real, it covers all and every sin. That we cannot say the same thing for healing because then sickness would not exist anymore if we accepted Christ that means that we should never ever be sick anymore if that is what atonement healing is forgiveness is immediate right it happens right now the moment that you ask for it ask for forgiveness of your sin and God forgives it but even our, um, our the, the advocates of atonement healing will say that healing can be gradual that's not the same as atonement of forgiveness of sin if it if it were the same if it were in the same path if the same cross that took away um, sickness then it should have been gone immediately And the thing is, the forgiveness of sin is never withheld because of faith. Now, this is the most important thing I think we should understand and we should know that God will never, ever withhold forgiveness of sin because of your faith. But with atonement healing, it seems that your healing comes in proportion to your faith. But your healing will come only if you believe enough. Forgiveness of sin is not, is not going to measure how much faith you have. That it be a mustard seed or a mountain of faith. It does not matter how much faith you have. Once you ask for forgiveness of sin, it will be given. So, truly, if we look into this, it's so difficult to uphold the teachings of atonement healing versus the God that we know. The God that we know will allow suffering. 
the God that we know will allow sickness and disease. The God that we know will allow death in our families. He will allow us to feel all of these things. But there are times when He uses these sufferings and these sicknesses. Like I said earlier, to draw us closer. To allow us to trust Him more. To allow us to acknowledge that He is God and He is King and He is above that. And to allow us to grow in faith. In the past year, and uh, most especially in the past few months when my entire family faced sickness and suffering and disease, it grew our faith. I do not think that we, my family, or all those other families in church who were afflicted by any form of disease was afflicted because of lack of faith or, or, or not enough faith or not enough sacrifices. I think God had this very important purpose for us. And we may not have seen it at that point in time. Because sometimes we can't. Our earthly sight, our eyes, that was created here on earth, cannot see the wisdom and the breadth and depth of the purpose of our suffering and our sickness and disease. But we do know, because of how we know Him, and how we understand atonement, and how we understand His death on the cross and what it led to, that we understand, we believe, and we trust that there is a greater good in store. There is a greater good and a greater purpose for our sickness and disease. And there is a greater reason that He allows it. And that He does not take it away that way. Because God came here to earth with that purpose that we may know Him more. And I thank the Lord every day that He does allow all of these things to happen to us. Because we, time and time again, as the church has seen in all the different members of CHCC and even also those who have um, recently joined and shared testimonials that there is such a good a greater purpose for what we are going through today and we may not see it clearly but it is there and we have surrendered ourselves to Him and to His will and we are here opening ourselves up to the lessons that He is teaching us. So I hope that uh, as I conclude this, this message we can once again lift ourselves up to Him and just surrender all our sickness all our suffering, should it be mentally, physically, emotionally, let's just lift them all up to God. For we know from this moment on that there is a purpose for what we are feeling. Let us pray. Hallelujah, Father God. We bless your name. We truly Bless your name and you raise up a hallelujah, Lord, for everything that we have gone through for the past year. Thank you, 
Lord, you showed us your power, your might, and your healing grace, Lord. We saw you move mountains. We saw you touch so many, many lives. Bless your name, Lord God. As a church, Lord, we refuse to see only the bad parts of the situation. Instead, we choose to see the good, the greater purpose you have for allowing this to happen. We see your hand in each and every family represented by this church. We hear your words, we feel your love, your comfort, and your compassion for each and every one of us. And we cannot help but wonder and be in awe of your love for us, Lord God. Thank you so much, Father, that you have allowed us to see once again that everything we feel right now has a purpose. And that through this global disease, you continue to minister to us continue to show us the lessons you need us to learn and you continue to show us your compassion you continue to show us your love your power your might your wisdom father god and what else can we do but to raise our voices in praise because you are the god that we know you are the God that we worship, and you are all powerful. Thank you, Father God, for this morning, for this day. Thank you to that you have allowed us once again to wake up, and breathe in, and breathe out. With every breath that we take, Lord God, we worship you. And we praise you. Thank you so much, Father. You are truly the only one who deserves our praise. In Jesus' name we pray.
Oh 